Good day to the Hogard Amy Zion Church family, relatives of our family, friends, and well wishers. Welcome to this, the third emancipation lecture of the Hogard Amy Zion Church. Today's lecture is entitled Emancipation and the Freedom Church posterity and prosperity. At this time, I will be sharing my screen so that we can follow the PowerPoint presentation. I am the Reverend Ronald A. Nathan, and I am the senior minister and pastor of the Hogard African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Emancipation and the Freedom Church. Prosperity and posterity. The first annual emancipation lecture was on Black Theology Matters to Black Lives. That was held in 2020. Then in 2021, we had our second annual emancipation lecture, the Pan-African Footprints of the AME Zion Church. And I am pleased in this month, on the 1st of August, uh, 2022, to give the third lecture, Emancipation and the Freedom Church, Prosperity and Posterity. The Freedom Church the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church was known for its involvement in the liberation and empowerment of persons of African descent during the transatlantic slave trade, the United States Civil War, the Underground Railroad, and the Civil Rights Movement. The AME Zion Church, or the Frisian Church, played a proactive role in the liberation and empowerment of persons of African descent. Many times, when we speak of the Freedom Church, many people are not fully aware of what it is we are talking about. And so I've taken time to outline our involvement. When I use the term African diaspora, I'm using this term to speak of persons of African birth or descent who were living or who are living outside of the continent of Africa. Most times when we speak about emancipation, the referral is linked solely to the past, the transatlantic slave trade. Today, I want to help us to understand that the past feeds into the present and the present feeds into the future. And so I do not want to just speak on what the transatlantic slave trade did. 
But to say that it did happen, this is where we are now. And this is where we want to be. On your screen, depicted there for you is what is called the mythical bird, Sankofa. Sankofa means to go back to the past and bring forward that which is useful and useful for future generations. Sankofa comes from the Akan peoples and in particular the Bono Adinkra symbol representing a bird with its head turned backwards while its feet face forward carrying a precious egg in its mouth. The bird's head turned backward is the retrieving of something that is in the past, the feet of facing forward and in the present, and the egg speaks of a future generation. So Sankofa, this symbol, represents ideally what I want to speak about in this emancipation lecture. It was Professor P.L.O. Lumumba who reminded us, and he's a famous Pan-Africanist from Kenya. He says, I believe we have reached a stage in life in the economic development of Africa, and I have added, and the diaspora, where moving forward is perilous. Moving backward is cowardice, and standing still is suicide. As we look at emancipation today, what is not highlighted many times is how do persons of African descent in the 21st century committed to Jesus Christ, how do they engage in proactive initiatives that follows in the legacy of African emancipation, liberation struggles, and advances towards Africa and her diaspora's future prosperity. This is what seemed to be missing in so many of our emancipation activities. So I agree with the professor. We cannot go back, that is cowardice. We cannot stand still, that's suicide. But moving forward is perilous, it has its dangers. As a Christian, as a minister of the gospel, I understand prosperity in the title of our uh, talk today as Shalom. Shalom comes from the African derived language known as Hebrew. And the word Shalom in its full this in its full meaning speaks of peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, welfare, and tranquility. Recently in a, a WhatsApp chat, I asked the question of the participants, what does emancipation look like? What does emancipation look like? And I would say it looks like shalom, peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, welfare, and tranquility in the African community.
all peoples have resources that derive from their past that is inherited. They have resources that come from their present situation, skills, human resources, motivations, and aspirations. And they have aspirations for the future and can make investments into the future. The struggle for racial justice. Our lives as persons of African descent has been dominated over the last 500 years as a struggle for racial justice. And therefore, I want to use this quote from Frederick Douglass, a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in the 18th and 19th century, or sorry, 19th and 20th century, where he said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Frederick Douglass was one of the best known personalities calling for the liberation of persons of African descent in the United States of America. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. And he said, those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate agitation or refuse to engage in struggle are men and women who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning, and they want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. So I want to highlight that if we fail to intentionally utilize our resources, past, present, and invest in our future resources, we would present ourselves as a people being impoverished and we will reduce our chances of prosperity and that of our posterity, our future generations. Intentional action. Let me say that racial discrimination is a sin. Racial injustice is a deliberate act against the image and likeness of God in persons of color. Therefore, to be intentional is to be deliberate, thorough, strategic, comprehensive, persistent, and engaged. Racial injustice and its parent white supremacy is real and pervasive. By that I mean it is widespread in society, in the social, economic, political, cultural, environmental systems that evolve out of our society today. So to those who wish to ignore, close their eyes, bury their head in the sand, or deny racial injustice, they have a rude awakening coming. One songwriter said, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. And that's why I speak about a struggle 
And I speak about us being intentional as peoples of African descent. We must be intentional about what we do. So we have to be deliberate. Our ideas has to be well thought through. Thorough. We need to be strategic, comprehensive, persistent, and engaged. So, what does a shalom responsible church look like? And in this particular instance, I'm looking at the Freedom Church, the AME Zion Church. It is a church that will examine its theology, its education, its outreach, its economic development, its leadership development and its collective responsibility in such a way to bring wholeness to our communities and to the world at large. Let us remind ourselves again that Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. There's a Ghanaian proverb that tells us total freedom, emancipation, and independence comes with responsibility. So how does Emancipation Day help us in the local Freedom Church here in Barbados? to position ourselves so that we could secure prosperity, shalom for ourselves, and for our posterity, our future generations. The children we baptize every year. The youth who meet with every Friday in our church. The families who worship with us every Sunday in person and online. Those brothers and sisters who pray for us, witness with us, and give aid through food parcels and clothes to our communities. How does Emancipation Day and these emancipation activities assist us? The people and nation of Barbados we pray for every Tuesday and support with our civic duties by calling for justice and governance. All of these must benefit from a shalom responsible church. How will we utilize one, our past resources. The legacy of denominational sheroes and heroes like Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, Bishop Alexander Walters, and hundreds of others must be re repeated constantly so that our youth and our children know these names, know what they mean, and know what their role was in society. That is utilizing our past resources. Plus, the sweat and spiritual equity of 40 years of service to the community of Jackson and the island of Barbados must not go amiss. We must build on those past achievements. Secondly, I believe we must utilize the current moment 
and resources. The members of the Hogad Amy Zion Church are the current resources that we have. The 30 or so members, adults, youth, and children. You are our collective resources. You are our potential. You are our present and our future. And so we must guard the youth in our church, the children that are baptized in our church, the young adults who are seeking career opportunities from our church, the seniors, the families, they must be our top priority. In utilizing the current moment and resources, we must not dislodge ourselves from the fact that we are part of a collective of 1.2 million members found in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom, in 15 African countries, nine Caribbean countries, and two Asian countries. Those are part of our collective resources that exist now. And in order to guard them, we must act intentionally to remove any vulnerability to European, Asian, or Russian hegemony and genocidal propensities and proclivities. In other words, we must defend those that God has given to us. Like Jesus Christ, we want to say, all those you have given us, Father, we have safeguarded. However, there is a third era. Our investment in our future posterity and our future prosperity. How do we do this? How do we secure a decent future for our children and our children's children? I have outlined here six areas that our local church will engage to secure the future of our existing church and those who are to come into our fellowship. Theology. Our daily church programs and activities must be undergirded by a theology, a belief system that removes people of color from second-class citizenship and servitude. Some call this the decolonizing of our theology. And so in the way we use the Bible, in the way we draw ideas inspired by the Bible, we must remove the idea that people of color, black people, people of African descent, are supposed to be second class. In the field of education, our sermons, Sunday school lessons, Bible studies, vacation Bible school literature must all pay attention to the education of our children and youth. Education is important and we must emphasize that to our children and to our youth. And ongoing education amongst our adult membership. So we will intentionally instill in them the idea that no nation, people or family 
can depend on charity or the generosity of others for their development. Or to put it another way, God bless the child that has got her own. We must be intentional about communicating to our children and youth and young adults that they and they only are responsible under God for their well-being, their shalom. So they must be active agents in their pros prosperity. We will intentionally insist, uh, commit ourselves, therefore, to physical and financial resources that will build up our educational, vocational, and information communication technology institutions with a focus on our youth and the youth of our communities. The third area, outreach. In our evangelism and missions at home or abroad, we will intentionally communicate to our children and youths that God sent Jesus to the disenfranchised, the poor, as seen in the gospel, where there are enslaved masses of the Roman Empire and colonized people in Palestine. We will deliberately target those in need of good news with holistic programs of uplift in the African diaspora, on the African continent and beyond. We will enter into partnerships with ecumenical brothers and sisters who are committed to uphold the principles of righteousness and justice in ecclesiastical and public affairs. In the field of economic development, we will teach financial literacy to our children and youth and engage in economic development strategies that would allow them to be proactive change agents in our development and not be sentenced to the lower rungs of economic activity, be that in Barbados, the Caribbean, Africa, or further afield. We are not destined to be drawers of water and hewers of wood only. Therefore, this must include Black economic empowerment initiatives. Here in Barbados, it will include the honoring of the skills and productive activity of each other by supporting local businesses and building economic capacity so we can upscale the things we wish to achieve. Let me say a few things on leadership development. Our children and our youth are highly gifted and brimming over with potential. We have got to harness that giftedness and potentiality by strengthening our lay and clergy leadership, whether that be through Leadership Training Institute, our developmental work during the holidays with our youth, or even in our various departments. Our training programs from Sunday school to graduate institutions must prepare persons of African descent 
to fulfill their potential for greatness and service. The AME Zion Church have a number of institutions of higher learning which we can take advantage of. Finally, let me speak on collective responsibility. We have been conditioned to distrust each other as people of color, as black people. That must become a thing of the past. Efforts of Africa and the African diaspora to collaborate at home and abroad, we greet with great excitement. Black Lives Matter movement, Pan-Africanism, African and Black caucuses will get our support. We will be supportive of CARICOM call for reparations and for closer ties with the African Union. At a local church level, we will continue to celebrate the African presence in the Bible, the Emancipation Acts activities and other African-centered festivals that recognize and honor our African traditions and cultural products. In conclusion, we understand Emancipation Day to be symbolic of the aspirations of our people. We are aware that no one day or monument can encapsulate all of the aspirations of our people, a people whose home continent was the cradle of civilization, a people whose leaders of kingdoms and empires, who were leaders of kingdoms and empires for tens of thousands of years, a people whose contribution to world sciences and technologies were and still is phenomenal. So total freedom, emancipation, and independence comes with responsibilities. We, the Hogard Amy Zion Church, the Freedom Church in Barbados, will be a shalom, responsible church, a church working for freedom, emancipation, independence, and yes, righteousness and justice. May God bless you in this emancipation day and this emancipation season. I pray that our time together was informative and I look forward to the comments and contributions of all those who have viewed this video. This the third emancipation annual emancipation lecture of the Hogard Amy Zan Church. Emancipation and the Freedom Church, posterity and prosperity. May God bless you richly.